And this is our plan of attack. Banks have become an official threat to our democracy. So consider this justice. Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, the number one listener-supported radio station on the Internet. Please help support this station so this battle can continue forward. Revolution Radio! It happens more often than we can imagine. In my case, I was sitting at home And out of nowhere, I just started feeling uncomfortable. Then it got worse, and I started perspiring. I tried to ignore it, but I waited too long. The chest pain came as we were driving to the hospital emergency. I felt my life clock begin to tick. I barely survived. There was lots of damage done to my heart. What do I do now? I was lucky. I took a leap of faith and tried a seven-herb formula with hawthorne, garlic, cayenne, and more called Extendivite. Herbs have been used for thousands of years to keep us healthy. If you're not using Extendivite as a preventative supplement, maybe it's time to start. To order, call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Welcome to Sacred Matrix, a divine paradigm of love and universal consciousness, with your host, Janet Kira Lesson and Dr. Sasha Lesson. Together, we transform the world. And now, Hi. here are your I'm hosts, sure Janet are. Kira and Dr. Sasha Lesson. Hello, hi everybody, and welcome to the Sacred Matrix. And I'm your host, Janet Kira Lesson, with my co-host, Dr. Sasha Alex Lesson, our producer is Thomas Becker, and our guests today are Joanne Richards and Dan Cooper. And Joanne is the executive director of the educational nonprofit Earth Defense Headquarters. And her husband, Mark Richards, and his father, Ellis Lloyd Richards, were involved in top level with top level military intelligence operations since World War II. Many, including on world and off world, I gotta turn this down. Here we go. Off world contact and battles with various alien species. And she's gonna talk about her knowledge of military operations and secret meetings uh, that both of these men were involved in, with. And she has information about numerous alien species, the secret space fleet, and battles with aliens on the off world. And that's why I have joined her today with Dan Cooper. And you've heard Dan Cooper on our show many times. And he was a hold on, I'm trying to get this scroll down. Uh he was genetically engineered by Japanese scientists in nineteen fifty two to be a super soldier and uh, was delivered through his surrogate mother on March second, nineteen fifty three at Samson Air Force Base. And he was born into one of the U.S. military secret space programs, and both Dan and Mark had experience with the Velociraptors and other alien species. So I'm going to first go and get my co-host, Dr. Sasha Alex Lesson. Sweetheart, are you there? Sound check. Oh, yeah, I'm here, and I just want everyone to know that, you know, Mark Richards is a national hero who has uh, served his country. Uh, He's been put away in jail on a bunch of nonsense, and 
Uh, I just want to put in my two cents there that this is the, this is the real thing. The guy that should be honored and have ticker parades, not be in jail. Right. Yes. Okay, I'm going to check with uh, Joanne for a sound check. Did we get your things, Joanne? Come on and see how we sound here. Maybe. I'm here, but uh, uh, can you hear me yet? Very soft. It's very, very soft. Um, maybe what we can do is have you uh, have um, our producer call you on your phone. Do you have your phone available? I, I'm about to do that. Yeah, I do. Like, okay, he's going to. Okay, so I'm going to start with Dan, and uh, Dan's going to tell us a little bit about himself while we're getting you on and his involvement with the Secret Space Program. A little bit of background. Hopefully, we'll have you on in two minutes here. Okay, Dan Cooper. Hi. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on, Janet. Uh, Thomas. Oh, we're excited to have you on as usually as usual, and Sasha's here, too. You guys are going to like each other. We just have to get Joanne with a better connection here. Well, so, I, I, um, well, I'm extremely honored oh, to okay. be on with Joanne. Yep. yep. I, okay. I, Joanne I'm is a physicist. A, you ask I'm me here. what I am. I'm a physicist. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I'm, okay, I'm a physicist. I invent free energy generators, motors, and engines. That's what I am. That's what I do today. Mm-hmm. What you how like? Did you get involved what you, in what you people? Yeah. All, all what you people care about is my twenty and back service in Darkly as a super soldier. That's okay. And, and I, I care about mind. free energy too. I, I, I care okay. about free energy. Yes. Well, it's it's not it's not as exciting. <laughs> I, I mean, think it's exciting. I mean, I would love to have no electric bill and not have to put gas in my car ever again. No, sure. no, but I, I mean the actual Bring science. The actual science itself is it would be quite boring for people who aren't interested in that level of science. It's a very high level of science, and mo- it's very boring. It's very hard work, and it's just not as exciting as, oh my God, you were a super soldier, you know. And uh, my kids, <laughs> do the same, my kids do the same thing. And well, Joanne, tell, it's such an um, honor. I can't tell you what an honor it is to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to meet you, Dan. Hi, Hi Sasha. Sasha. Hi, Janet. Sasha. Thanks for having me. Hang up your computer. Hi, hang up your yeah, computer. Up your We're computer. getting the feedback. <laughs> okay, I closed, I closed my computer. Is that better? Okay, say something again now. Uh, I think so. Try one more time. Okay, I'm I can here. hear you. Hello, everybody. Can everybody okay. hear? Okay. Okay, so how do you want to do this? Dan, do you want uh, ladies' choice? How about that? Ladies' choice. Joanne, do you want to go first? Because uh, you two are meeting each other, and you need to give each other some of your story and background so you can understand each other and, and get why I decided in the universe to put the two of you <laughs> together on the show, because I think this is hot. Uh, so okay. ladies' choice, All do you right. want to go first, or do you want oh, sure. Dan to go I first? Will. Okay, so, okay. Dan, I live in Northern California, San Francisco area. I am married to a Navy captain um, who grew up in a military family. His dad and he were doing military intelligence for many, many years um, on and off the planet, and they've both been around numerous alien species. The one they are most closely associated with are, we just call them raptors because they aren't true velociraptors, but I forgot to look up the, the name of what they are. It starts with a D. But anyway, um, you know, they descended from dinosaurs. They started as dinosaurs. They descended from dinosaurs. They still look like dinosaurs. They've been working with our military since the early 50s. My husband's very good friends with them. And, um, and like Sasha said, my husband was, he was actually framed for something that happened here in the Bay Area in the early 80s, so he's been in prison since then. And after several years of that, he started writing about some of his uh, military history based on, you know, what the military has been doing with aliens and UFOs on and off the planet. And he has written several reports about some of the stuff he can talk about. And I go to different conferences when I'm invited and, and speak about what he's written. So... 
Um, there, there I am. <laughs> okay. So, Dan, you want to explain to um, Joanne who you are and your involvement in the Secret Space Program and what your job was? What did you do? Uh, well, Joanne, I, I was um, – in 52, the Nazis had, dip, had it uh, – they made an agreement. As, it's a ceasefire. The ceasefire was first. And then they negotiated the final treaty in 57 was signed between the Nazis and the United States. Uh-huh. Um, the 52, when, when they had, um, when the Nazis had made the ceasefire in 52, uh, with Eisenhower, the, they had given them different technologies. And that's when the, um, the super soldier program got full blown with the United States. Um, okay. my, my the program I was a part of is I was uh, the the gray the gray the Roswell gray aliens had had taught the Japanese science. Remember the Japanese were working with the Nazis, so the Japanese scientists were involved in the secret space program very early on. Um, uh-huh. With the Nazi secret space program very early on, the Nazi secret space program went back to, for my knowledge, even before twenty seven, but. In 27 was when uh, Nikola Tesla had sold the Nazis the uh, six four six anti-gravity. Uh, it's it's like magnetic energy only it does many right. different things. One of one of right. it is anti-gravity. So Nikola Tesla sold he tried to sell it to the United States. They wouldn't buy it. He said my price tag's two million. I'm not going to accept accept anything less. And if you don't want it, I know other people who do. And he's and the Nazis gave him his two million very gladly. Um, they had other scientists working on the. Uh, Free energy electricity generator. It actually takes a very powerful one uh, and a very special one. It's not. All, it's not like other free energy electricity generators. It's a very special one. I actually know how to do it, so I know okay. exactly what I'm talking about um, because I reinvented it. Anyway, so that particular uh, electricity generator was um, designed by a uh, German scientist, and then with the combination of the two, with the six force and that generator, they were able to achieve uh, warp one, the first warp one spaceships. The, the Hannaby one, the, I'm sorry, the Hannaby one, the Hannaby two, and the Hannaby three are all German okay. engineered. All German engineered. No alien yep. technology went into those. Okay. Okay. So then what happened is then they, then they started making agreements with the Greys because you see, you have to have warp one capability. You have to be a warp one civil. You have to have warp one capability before anybody can talk right. to you. So the right. Greys started making agreements and they gave them genetic engineering knowledge and the Japanese scientists were trained in that from 1929. Oh, really? I was yes, <laughs> I was engineered by the Japanese. I even I even posted the picture of the the Japanese scientist who engineered me on on this on this uh, site. Uh huh. I was actually. Yeah, I read that I, part about you. Yeah, no, that's a real, that's a real picture. That's the real guy that was in, that was in charge of that genetically engineered. He's proud as a father because he was my father. Uh huh. Anyway, wow. um, so I I was engineered to specifically to engage in one function, and that is to be a specialist in sword fighting, fooling with swords. Cool. Um, and I was trained over many years. I'm not going to go into a lengthy thing. It's just that the, the genetic engineering, they basically make you a little faster, a little stronger, a little smarter than the average bear. But the training is what makes you the super soldier. It's the training. It's an exceptional training program. I'm not going to go heavily into the training because uh, I think that Janet really wants me to jump forward to when I met the Velociraptors. Right. Now, the problem is, is that when you come back from your 20 and back, okay, 20 back, you go out on this timeline. Right. And then, and you serve on another, you serve on other planets. And for me, it was, it was on, on ships and other planets all, I was with Dark Fleet. So we were way out there. We were nowhere near the solar system, nowhere near the 52. We were way out there. I mean, I, uh-huh. I we, Dark Fleet hung with the Draco at, and we, we went way out there. Okay. Um, and we were also firefighters, which means uh, in the different bases, US, in the different United States bases throughout the galaxy that would have problems, uh, uh, we would go in and, and, and be called in to fix them because we were the best of the best fighters in the United States military. And we had to go in and, and take care of those problems. And this was one of those problems. Anyway, so when you come back from your 20, as soon as you finish your 20, then they, they jump you right back to where they took me. Took me at 17 and a half, uh, 1970, that was. They, they took me in 1970. 
uh, at 17 and a half, and then, then they ring you right back to right where they took you. So your parents never knew you were gone. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so, uh, but you don't get that same body. You get a different clone body because they have to dumb it down. You can't have those abilities and you can't have those education. And then they wipe you 100% white. Uh-huh. It's very, very rare to get memories back. Extremely rare. And I only have sure. a few. I only have a few and I keep getting a little bit more and a little bit more. I only have a few. Um, but I have a lot of memories from this timeline that, that corroborate what the memories that I have from that timeline. And my memory of the Velociraptor engagement, um, basically we were our team. We were 16. It was our team. My brother, my twin brother and I, we were leading the team. He was the sergeant and I was a corporal. Piece. But we had Air Force ranks. He was, he was tech sergeant and I was airman. Uh-huh. Uh, but people don't know those ranks. <laughs> they think of sergeant, corporal. Everybody knows that one. But we were Air, you want to say it's Air Force. Yeah, my, and my and, uh, I, and I have all the proof on that one. Go ahead, ask your question. I just say my father-in-law, what, Mark's dad was Air Force, so. Yeah, yeah. Everybody keeps laying this whole thing. You want to say it's Air Force? It's clueless, and their program is behind. No, wrong. Yeah, no. <laughs> Completely wrong. Right. Anyway, um, all of all of the military branches were heavily involved in the secret space program. All United yeah. States military branches. All United States. Great. All United States military services, CIA, NSA, all of it, everybody, everybody was involved in the U.S. Yeah. There's nobody that wasn't. Uh, anyway, so uh, the Velociraptor engagement, um, we're, this was like six months into our into our service, and so we're just okay. a bunch of 18-year-old kids. <laughs> all, the, our team of 16 was just a bunch of 18 year old kids. I'm not going to tell the whole story, Jan. I told you I'm not going to relate the entire story because Joanne's okay. here. Okay. Joanne is the, the, the prize, the, you know, the special guest. So I'm not going to relate the entire story of the okay. engagement because that would take the whole two hours and I'm not going to do that to Joanne. I understand. Uh, I'm just going to give you the short of it. The thing is, sure. is that when they, when they bring us in, they brief us about, um, the this team of six uh, velociraptors that we were supposed to capture. Uh, oh. uh, yeah, yeah, we were, uh, but they don't tell us. We don't tell us the politics of the situation. You know, they just brief us about these six individuals and their capabilities, what the team does, what to expect in the engagement. You know, we're not, we're not, you know, we're just a, we're just a bunch of kids of lower rank. They don't tell us anything right. else except what we exactly right. need to know for the specific battle that we're about to engage in. And this is right. not a battle. This isn't a battle like uh, open technological warfare. This is a. Right. This is they apparently they had already had an arrangement with the Velociraptors, and not all Velociraptor species are the same. There are there are so many different aliens out there, and so many different reptilian a- aliens out there. There's no way for me to right. know whether the group that I fought is is the same as the group that you fought. I, and I don't know anything about their, their, their society. All I know is about this one team okay. that I remember. Okay. So, um, so they, the idea is that there were rules of engagement and the rules of engagement were, uh, we, we, we had to fight old style, which is basically we had to run yeah, through the rock. Okay. We had, to, yeah, we had to run through the rocks to chase them down and we could only use swords. Cool. We had laser swords. They had laser swords. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and basically we had to run down this Velociraptor team in the rocks. Have you ever seen a lizard run through the rocks? I gave, <laughs> I gave Janet, I gave Janet, um, videos of what it looks like, what a lizard looks like running through the rocks. Uh-huh. That's what these guys were doing. But we were taught by the Apache, uh, our Apache, um, the same Apache that Geronimo 16, um, oh, very good. Yes. That same group that the, we were taught by that, those Apaches, uh-huh. um, that group, the, uh, they taught the army, and then the army had um, basically it was they were Apache warriors because the Americans never did catch on like the Apaches, and they wanted us to be the very best. And we were taught by the very best Apache Comanche warriors how to run through the rock because the only way you're going to catch a Velociraptor running through the rock is running full speed through the rocks, full speed. I mean, beyond your imagination, that's like doing a four minute mile in the rock. Which, which is interesting because. Some of the endearing Apaches in Dulce, New Mexico, you know, uh, one of the, the the elders there, he was military. Well, I don't know if he said he was military intelligence, but he was in our military. Oh, he was Marines. So that makes perfect sense what you're saying, that you would be trained by Apaches. 
I well, that's only one of our instructors. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, yeah. I think you know, there's a huge amount of information I can give you, and yeah. and over time, we you know, we'll be talking. You'll learn more about that because it's really very yeah. exciting for me because. Uh, you know, winning bat, winning all these battles for the United States and all these duels for the United States was very exciting. It was very enjoyable for me. And, and, uh, you know, to be a hero, to, to have been able to engage that capacity for the United States is, is I'm very proud of that. Uh huh. Okay. Doesn't mean I didn't, I didn't come back to free humanity from the slavery that they're going right, to right, put right. us in or to, or, or to stop them from doing the things that they do to the other super soldiers when they come back. That's what I committed myself yeah. to do when I came back. And that's what I'm doing. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I'm not proud of what I did when I was in the service. Good. Anyway, um, okay, so we, we did catch the team. We surrounded them. And um, the, the real short of it is that we had had two of their swords with us, two of their standard traditional swords, which are two hardwood swords. They're, uh-huh. they're really big because these guys are big. They're like 11, 12 feet standing. Uh, the uh-huh. small ones, the small ones <laughs> that are the warriors. Remember, there's just different classes, and they don't all look alike. The Velociraptors of one class aren't, don't look the same as the Velociraptors of the other class because they're, because they, they genetically injure themselves for their own, for the class. You know that already. Okay. Anyway, so, um, these guys are actually smaller so they can be faster. And so, um, basically we were, we were told, you know, we had our, our, uh, um, we're being, we're constantly being instructed by our uh, commanders as oh, what to do. And they're watching uh-huh. the whole battle, uh, you know, from the video cameras, from our, our, uh, our light armor suits. So we had to take, I had to take, um, once we surrounded them, um, we put, I, I had to take off my armor, get naked. Um, they're naked. So I had to be naked. I had to be naked. We, I, I laid the two swords, the two wooden swords in their traditional manner before them, bowed very lowly and requested the honor of a duel. Ah. And that was, that was the instruction. And, and yeah. then, and then he said, yes, you may have the honor, which means that, and then he raised his hand so I could raise my head. And, uh-huh. uh, and look at him straight. And then I did. And, and then, and then he said, and, and, uh, what shall it be to? And he gets the choice of the con, uh, the, um, uh, the con, is it the contest to first blood? Is it the contest to dis- disability? Mean you, you, that person can't fight anymore. You're not trying to kill him. Right. Uh, or is it to the death? Permanent. Well, only one person walks away. Now I'm, I'm challenging the leader. I already knew who the leader was. They briefed, <laughs> they briefed me who, they briefed me who the leader was, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, so it was pretty, pretty easy. So, uh, and he said to first blood, and then I agreed, and then we both prepared ourselves. Uh-huh. Anyway, I'm not going to go over the details. I won. It was easy for me. Okay. Okay. No, it wouldn't be boring, but go ahead. No, 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 I can't. It's it just, no, no, it's your oh, turn. Fine. You get to that's talk. Fine. i got to turn off the mic while you're talking. Uh, well, so I, I do have a question, though. The, the velociraptors you came in contact with, were they, did they originate in space, or were they the ones that originated here on Earth, and they were part of the ones that colonized space? No, the, the ones I dealt with, it was on a planet that they occupied entirely. Right. Now, whether that was okay. their home planet, I don't know. Right. Okay, so the ones we deal, or, you know, I haven't ever met them, obviously, but the ones I talk about and that Mark has the most, you know, knowledge of, or, you know, what we who we talk about the most, they originally were from Earth. They left the planet. Many of them left the planet millions of years ago to colonize space. Some stayed behind on Mars, on the moon, and like underground. There was an asteroid that hit the planet 65 million years later or years ago, and the ones that survived on those places evolved into a more human-looking, you know, version, and they are now called reptoids, and they're horrible. Um, but the, you know, the main the main body is huge and numerous and they're out in space and they have a huge empire out there. Um, But I've also learned that there are numerous, there are other reptilian species out there. So I cringe when people just say the reptilians, like, no, (laughs) there's there's numerous kinds. So, um, but yeah, this is interesting because the ones Mark has taught me about, do have a caste system. They do have an, they're run by an empress and there's like different family groups and they have a Senate, you know, they believe in, um, you know, food and fuel and family and, you know, art and culture and education and spirituality, but they're, you know, they're ruthless hunters and cause you know, that's what they're built for. But, and they, 
they're much. I kept, I kept the. Um, what did I say? Comparing them to like the Velociraptors in Jurassic World because I love that movie. And again, the species they originated from, it's D O some D E O and then like C H. And I, I really, I should have looked it up. But they're they're actually bigger than the original Velociraptors that were also here on Earth. You know, because those are smaller. Um, but these can be. Um, like when they're in running stance, they're like two or three feet high at their hips, and then they've got the long tail, you know, and the long the chest and all that, and you know, strong strong legs and strong arms and opposable thumb claws and kill claws and uh, but they can when they stand up, they're you know seven to nine feet tall. But um, so it's it's fascinating because I I don't know much about the other species from space. Um, I know there's the Dracos, which are enemies of the raptors, even though the raptors' empire is called the Draconian Empire, but they are not Dracos. And I know there's the reptoids, and then I, I know there's other species out there, but I don't know anything about them. And I know that the raptors, our raptors have been working with our military since 52 when they met my father-in-law, and I know they have several, they have a few bases here on Earth at the moment, but they have a huge empire out in space somewhere. So. Yeah, yes, all that's correct. And what's really interesting is the ones that we fought, they, uh-huh. they had the same gestures as the, the ones that were in the uh, Jurassic Park. The uh-huh. same facial gestures and the, the, the uh-huh. twirling of the tail and all the, the just like that, with the, where uh-huh. they twirl their, twirl their tail in a circle. And that, that oh. was, those gestures are very identifiable. And we were in the heart of their realm, the realm oh, wow. of the Lassaraptor realm. We were in a planet in the heart of their realm. Okay. I mean, we're, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't, I wasn't stationed there. That was just one engagement. Right. Okay. Right. Was that, is that in our galaxy? No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's in our galaxy, not in our solar system. I thought you said solar right, system. Right. No, I, I know in, um, our raptors, they're not in our solar system, but they are in our galaxy. Correct. So, and they have okay. a huge realm covering many, yeah. many solar systems, over a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> cool. Wow. Uh, let's... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Janet. Hey, uh, can you hear me? I had to... Uh, bow out and come back on because my yeah. my connection was really bad. Alrighty, so um, do you have questions for each other uh, or Dr. Lesson? Do you have a question for those two? Joanne, do you have any questions for Dan? Um, no, I, I will ask them as they they come. Well, let me let me let me ask you this, Dan. Did you train for this off planet or on Earth? All the training occurred on Earth. All of it. Okay. Um, my the, training. My training. That doesn't mean all super soldiers. I no, know what I know, my no, training I, I know. I know. Um, because I have a report from Mark when he was doing some training with the Raptor Imperial Fleet in the summer of 1970 when he was still in high school. So, Because um, it sounds like you and he are about the same age. And it was a, a castle in England. Because the humans and the the raptors wanted to like you know start working more together and stuff, so that was interesting. Um, because he, I I don't know if you know who he is. He's he's at least heard of you because I said I'm doing this interview today on you know Janet Sasha Station with this guy named Dan Cooper. So uh, do you, have you ever heard of him? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so that that's all I got out of him. But um, so I don't know how much he knows about you, but you never know. I I, I, yeah, mean, I, I was at such low rank, and and when we shipped out at seventeen and a half, we shipped out. I mean, we were we were yeah. thousands of light years away. Wow. Yeah, and uh, he was not in a twenty and back program. I know that, but um, it's just interesting to see where some parallels are. Are you allowed to say where you trained? Or even the general location? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not with the Secret Space Program. Um, and I uh, I, I'm a rogue. I actually work for the Earth Alliance. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much the enemy of the Secret Space Program personnel right now. Oh, I see. 
And so, yes, I'm at I'm at 100% liberty to tell you anything that I possibly can remember. Okay, cool. Cool. <laughs> so are you allowed to say where you trained? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Where was I it? Trained, I trained originally in Japan because uh, that's, oh, Japan. Where, okay. that's where they, the, the Japanese yeah. sword fighters, uh, they, they found out that the Japanese sword fighting, also Shaolin, we had both Shaolin instructors uh-huh. and Japanese instructors in sword fighting, but those were the wow. two... Those were the only two methods that they found had any effect against um, that that we could stand toe to toe with any other species that insisted that you can't come here unless you're willing to fight with uh-huh. swords. And if you're not willing to right. fight with swords, you need to leave, or you're going to be for dinner. Uh huh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's interesting because um, I, I know Mark is an excellent swords person as well and i know he you know i don't know where he got his original training i know he did some work in japan and did some competitions early on so you guys would probably have fun talking about your sword stuff but um so that that's cool god there's something else i was going to say oh i know i was going to tell a story like again because especially if if you've got two leaders fighting or two commanders fighting it's really an honor to be kind of like i know it sounds Silly, not silly, but sounds strange to do like hand-to-hand combat with your, you know, enemy, but who's also your equal. And there was a time in the Antarctic when Mark's dad was down there fighting some reptilian faction, and um, the Nazis were working with them at that moment. And there was a moment where my father-in-law was having to, you know, he he engaged in hand-to-hand combat with like the reptilian leader of that group, and thankfully for my father-in-law, he killed him, but then he was honoring him as such a great rap, you know, reptilian leader that he did some scream or howl or whatever just to show his respect for the, the leader that that you know, guy had been. So that's, that's interesting. Yeah, and I agree. It's not always a shoot from far away. You do have to get up close and personal sometimes. Right. And, uh, yes, they, your character is evaluated in their realm. Your character uh-huh. is evaluated by how you react in victory. Oh, cool. So that's correct. And so did yeah, you that, win that, that battle, Dan? Did you win and how did you react? I, I always won. I won all the tournaments and all the duels. <laughs> So how did you react? What was the proper thing to do when you won? You, you uh, uh, the way the always honor the uh, defeated. Of course, these weren't to the death. Very rarely is it to the death. It's always to disab- disability or first blood. Very, very rarely is it to the to the death. Uh, sometimes it is. It just depends on what the circumstance is and who you're up against. And it's, it's just a lot of it. It's just. It's just not always done to death because these people, they're in charge. They're, they're the rulers of their realm. They don't want to have to go to, to fight to the death every single fight. Right, right. They're not the last uh, servants. Could you have an honorable surrender? Can you say, I see we're outnumbered and so uh, here's our swords? No, they don't. No, 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 no. When we, when we I'll give you an example, when we, when we surrounded the, the last Raptor group, uh, they 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 stop and surrender, and because they know that that there's going to be a duel to resolve the conflict, then they go their way and we go our way. But there's no such thing as if it's to the death, there's no surrender. If the contest is to the death, and every and everybody agrees it's to the death, only one person leaves, or only one team leaves. It's a lot like uh, uh, jousting. I don't know if you know anything about jousting. It's very much like. Uh, a right. lot of the a lot of the reptilians, warrior species. That, remember, that's all I did was engage in with warrior species because that's the yeah, only that's way you right. get into their realms is to be a, a fighter of top quality. It's not possible. You can't even enter their realms unless you are. Anyway, so uh, that's what I was trained for. Seventy five percent of advanced species don't resolve their conflicts in battle. They resolve their conflicts in chess matches. They resolve their conflicts in Olympic really? games. They resolve their conflicts by gambling games. Only a small percentage of the advanced species do this, but that was wow. what I did. That was my specialty. Uh huh. Anyway, so where were we? Go ahead. Um, 
What were you asking? Okay, so you, yeah, what were you asking, Sash? I, no, no, you, you, you answered it. It's like, uh, the world that you describe is so violent that I just know in my heart there's, there's a, a, a ways that I would, that are right for me that are, that are different than that. What can I say? Oh, no, I mean, Janet was asking, what was the ritual? We always followed the ritual of the combatant that we were dealing with. If it was a scream to honor them, it was a scream that we did. Oh, so right, you knew right. that in advance. To going in, you knew that. Oh, yeah, they get, you get the full briefing. Oh, you get the full briefing of the etiquette uh-huh. that's required in the battle. Uh-huh. And, uh-huh. In the vic- and in the victory, especially in the victory. Be- well, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, well, that's go- kind of like... Go ahead. I'm sorry, Sasha. No, no. You go. That, that was Dan. Oh, Dan, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry. You guys have to ask questions. Oh. Okay. Well, Joanne, I, go ahead. I was just going to say it's um, in a similar situation, for example, because I talk a lot about communication and how it's, it's difficult to communicate with different species. And just like the combat, you need to know who you're, you know, you're about to deal with. For example, like if you're having a conference or if you're having a meeting with all these other species that, you know, you don't know who they are, you've got to learn to at least say hello, how are you, in their language. Otherwise, you'll be inciting, a you know, an intergalactic problem. And uh, it's, it's a little bit similar to when you're going into combat. You need to understand who you're dealing with. So, you know. It's it's much broader than just yeah. our earthly United Nations. Correct. Issues. The universal yeah. translator is not enough. You have to use gestures. You have to actually uh, use their speech for certain things. Hello right. has to be done in their language. Gestures right. have to be done in their manner. If you do the wrong gesture, yeah, then then and you ask them for a duel, they'll say no. Ah. And you need to leave before we eat uh-huh. you. Yeah, yeah. You have to show the proper respects before yeah, exactly. you get the honor to do the duel. Ah. Yeah, even if you only- capture them. Even if you capture them. Uh-huh. Wow. Is that the only species you ever dealt with? No, no, no. They had me. Man, I fought warrior species all over the place. Um, <laughs> you mean, I met all of the best of the best at the Kumite, the Galactic Kumite. That's that's the column the culmination of my career in the United States military was uh-huh. the Galactic Kumite, where uh-huh. all the best of the best in the entire galaxy are, are invited to attend. You get a special invitation. My uh-huh. victories in many tournaments and in many duels became well known uh-huh. throughout the galaxy and I received an invitation. So did two of my other uh, uh, uh colleagues on our team. Uh-huh. There were three of us that went. Did so you have a you uniform that identified you as, as American? Did your uniform, you know, what was it like going to uh, the Winter Olympics or something? What, what, what was it, What were you wearing? What did it look like? What was it? Oh, you want to know? It's a huge, long story about that uh, uh, thing. And but I, you know, I, I can answer just some questions. I mean, it's a really long. It take me four hours to, to do it. I'd love to do it with you guys. I'm not going to do that to Joanne. I want to hear more from Joanne. Well, anyway, the right uniforms right. that we wore, the United States Air Force uniforms that we wore were all black. Huh. Okay, but that's because we were hanging with the Nazis. And their oh, right. uniforms were, that the SS, right. we're talking about the SS, right. the real right. SS, all right. black. So our uniforms had to match their uniforms, they insisted. And then the Japanese uh, uh, instructors, are all of our Japanese instructors who are also always hung with us, they all their uniforms were black, only they wore black hakama and gi. When, uh, most of the time, uh, we wore uh, hakama and gi because we were always working with the Japanese, but, but, our, but our dress blues, which were dress blacks, right. were very much like the Air Force uniforms, just all black. Interesting. Uh-huh. But you, okay, and you said you're definitely U.S. military, but you were part of Earth Alliance, not... Oh, no, no, no. I am now Earth Alliance. Oh, now. Okay. Gotcha. When I, so when I came back, were, when I came, when you come back from your 20 and back and they wipe your memory, you're not in service anymore. Right. Okay. But somewhere along the line, I started getting my memories back. Actually, no, no, this is a long story, actually. 1985. 
Oh, wow, that's a long story. 1981, I had decided that uh, I wanted to defeat the oil companies. I wanted, And the only way I was going to be able to do that, uh, and that's a long story as to why I even thought about doing that, I, I figured it out the only way I was going to be able to do that was to get was to teach was to convince China to do business and to teach them how to do business to defeat the United States in business. Huh. So I went to the University of Colorado uh, specifically to do that in 82. From 82 to 85, I graduated with two four-year degrees with high honors, also completed a master's during the period, which they wouldn't give me. Uh, and in it was either in November or December of 85, the Reagan administration had brought the Chinese finance minister to me to teach in the class in Dr. Thomas's class uh-huh. for three hours. And he came there to give a lecture and I lectured him. Uh-huh. And when he went back, he, he even credited me for this in his memoirs and Xi Jinping was there. He was there. So uh-huh. he knows me personally. Uh-huh. Anyway, that's what made me earth Alliance was from that action on. I was earth Alliance. Earth Alliance is primarily China and Russia. Yeah, I can give you all the other entities. Just think of it as the BRICS, with the inner Earth uh, beings. And, but the inner Earth beings don't don't uh, they don't provide any technology. They just they're oh, just so they're part they of just the Earth su- Alliance. They're just supportive, <laughs> but they don't give any real support. Earth Alliance is China. Oh, China. Who's, what's the inner Earth Alliance? What are they? The called? BRICS. BRICS is Brazil, Russia. India, China, and South Africa. And you that said is they were inner, part inner Earth? of Earth Alliance. That is the backbone of Earth Alliance. Are there are there societies from inside the Earth? Yeah, the inner Earth beings, but they, but they don't participate in any meaningful way. Right. Okay. Well, that so, kind of sounds like you know when my father-in-law was alive and before him. In 1947, the UN organized uh, like an international intelligence agency called International Security, and Admiral Nimitz ran it till he died in the 60s, and then my father-in-law took over, and um, and that's when there was like a threat to the planet. All these countries that were supposedly at cold war with each other, you know, worked together to, you know, help, you know, save the planet or de- deal with whatever the threat was. So this kind of sounds like almost like an offshoot, maybe. I don't know. Is it to protect the planet? Oh, basically, uh, the Eisenhower administration pretty much uh, believed that the only way that they were, well, th- they were told that that we were all slaves and that um, un- unless we agreed to give up the entire of all the entire population of Earth to slavery, um, then they wouldn't, they wouldn't even talk to them. But, uh, they had exchanged advanced technology for, for all of humanity to be put into slavery. So the reason that everybody on earth isn't allowed to have any technology or isn't allowed to see anything or become in, you know, be involved in this is because we were all sold as slaves. And that's still, uh, what the United States is committed to, delivering up the entire planet, the, all of humanity on this planet, uh, into slavery. That they're committed to that. So, um, and the, the SSP is they're still committed to that. But uh, uh, the BRICS alliance, Earth, the Earth alliance, uh, we're, we're opposed to that. We don't want to do that. We're not. We're not going to. We're not going to do that. Right. Thank I God. know. Um, <laughs> Mark has wow. mentioned in several reports that. Certain government groups, you know, were making deals with different alien groups, you know, people for, you know, they had quotas, annual quotas. We'll give you this much technology, you let us take this many people. And I know um, at a conference that took place in England in 1961 that Mark was at as a little kid because his dad was running security and stuff, um, one of the topics of conversation in their various committee meetings were, you know, can we kidnap the humans? And, da, da, da. and you know, certain species thought there was nothing wrong with that. And certain, you know, want to be coming up New World Order type people thought there was nothing wrong with that. And, uh, you know, definitely, uh, what was his name? Um, certain people in England, you know, England and, and my father-in-law, certain, definitely certain people were definitely against that. So, you know, that's that's been a topic of conversation for quite a while. Well, the, the basic 
the basic plan was to distress the planet with global warming. That's an intended result. That's real result. It's not right. a false flag. It's real. Right. It's intended. Right. It was intended from the very beginning in 1940. Um, they committed full bore to it from the very first gas engine on. That was the intention was to bring the planet to the brink of destruction so that when their alien slavers come to collect their, to collect their, uh, uh, pay, us, we would all voluntarily go. Oh yeah, take us away. Sure, we'll go to your planet. No, yeah, get us off this world. And so you're all going to voluntarily become slaves. Because, wow. but, but the thing is, if they hadn't distressed the planet intentionally, that you would never have done that. That, that, that is major crime against humanity. Yeah. That means the SSP, that I don't have to serve the SSP, no matter what contract I've signed, and I didn't sign any, I serve the Earth Alliance because they're trying to free humanity from this slavery uh, compact that uh, idiot SSP people made with all these aliens for advanced technology? Seriously? The 20, 20, what's it, 20 pieces of silver? Right. Wow. So, so are we going to witness? Yeah, go ahead, Joanne. I was just going to say, so I, I've i never heard of the Earth Alliance, so I'm very fascinated by it. So, like, is that government people doing that, or is that, like, a, a group of civilians? <laughs> no, it's the government. Oh, no, no, it's the government. Okay. It's, it's Xi Jinping. Oh, yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah. Wow. Can you trust the Chinese? I mean, are they going to... I don't know. I, I got to get over there and talk to them. I just had I just had a high level meeting with with a with an SSP uh, officer high rank this weekend. Very exciting, actually. I have a lot to tell you about that. Uh, And I asked permission to go over there and uh, meet with them. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Can you read body language? And are you psychic? Can you tell if that's someone to trust or not? How good are your instincts? It's probably pretty good because you were trained. I've known this particular I've known this particular person for ever since '05. And you've met with this person before in the... Uh, I've met with, with this person many frequency? times since 05. Okay, okay, okay. So I know well, pretty well. I can give you a... a uh, he told me... I can tell you some things. He told me that um, Trump had said that I'm protected, nobody's supposed to touch me. I can only... Basically what happened was is um, the NSA and the CIA and a bunch of other high-ranking officers in the secret space program, they met with Trump and they asked for um, me to be executed. They asked for permission to execute me. They had to ask the president for executions of U.S. citizens. Of you, and, of Dan Cooper. Like, what? Go of ahead. you, Dan Cooper. They wanted yeah. to execute you. Yeah, Dan Cooper, okay. me. Right here today, oh. me. Right here today. Oh. This, is, this, okay. is a meeting that, this is a meeting that just occurred like a week or two ago. Okay. With all the high-ranking military personnel met with Trump and said, well, you know, we want you to sign this executive order for the execution of Dan Cooper. And so the first thing he says, he goes, you know, I'm, I'm kind of guessing at this. You know, I, I don't have all the details, so I'm kind of adding in, all right? Uh-huh. Right. All right so, so, so Trump goes, is it true? Is he a super soldier? Did he really do those things he said? Quiet. Nobody said no. He said, so let me get this right. You want me to go on record to be the president that kills, that is known for executing our greatest heroes. <laughs> Not going to do it. Yeah, right. Well, that's cool. In fact, he's protected. Everybody in this room understand? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yes. Wow. Huh. So I now have U.S. diplomatic immunity and... Chinese diplomatic community. Wow. Well, what about well, the rest? I have of the I have other so immunities well. besides that, but those are my those are my two new immunities. Great. Great. What about and, the rest of us that are being sold off? Are we going to be used as sex? Are we going to be able to pull us off? Slaves or are we? Going I, I, to be I have an idea how to pull it off, but it's a big task. Well, I, I have ideas how to pull it off, but it's a very big task. What do you want to know? Have you talked to 
Yeah, well, let, let bookmark that for just a moment. Joanne, have you talked to um, Mark about any of this? Uh, are, are you aware of our status, human beings as slaves? Um, not at the same level that, you know, Dan is, is talking. Like I said, I, I'm aware that different countries make quotas, um, but I wasn't aware of that, you know, everybody's been already sold off type of stuff. Um, but I know there are species here who, who definitely want to create us as, I mean, have us be a slave race. So that's, that's interesting. I'm not disagreeing. I just don't know all the facts. Um, okay. Right, but you do oh, know yeah. global warming is created. The what? You, uh, you know global warming is created intentionally. They're intentionally destroying the planet on purpose. Oh, I'm sure. I Yeah, I, okay. I totally agree that global warming is real. Right, but they're doing that for a very specific purpose. So yes. that you will be willing to leave the planet if you are asked to. Right. Yeah, it, it's apparent to me... Go ahead, your turn. That uh, we are indeed already enslaved uh, financially. Uh, women are domestic slaves. There's actual slavery going on. Conscription of people uh, to, to go kill other people is a form of slavery. Don't kid yourself. You're a slave right now, most of you. Hmm. Th that's correct. The economic slavery system was established in order to acclimate you to your to your slave existence on the other planets that you're going to go to. That is correct. Alrighty. Um, we might want to hold the solution so after the break, which is in about four or five minutes. So let's identify the problem a little bit more. So Dan, what else can you tell us about how we're screwed? <laughs> and then we'll get the break and come back with solutions. <laughs> okay. okay, so the outer barrier. Joanne, do you know anything about the outer barrier that was put up by the spear beings? Have you ever heard of the outer barrier around our solar system? Um, I've heard it mentioned. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, it's really a very well-kept secret. Uh, the spear beings did put up an outer barrier. It's an eighth force field. An eighth, an eighth force field can't be penetrated by anything else except for soul consciousness, you know, you, you, your real essence of you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um so nothing can penetrate it, and that surrounds our entire solar system. So we're essentially on lockdown. In other words, we can't be the, the, the billions and billions of people that are on this planet cannot be delivered up into slavery because of the barrier. They can't come and take us. They can't come. They can't even get their ships here anymore. We can't get through the barrier. What about those who have wormhole technology? Wormholes can't get through the eighth force. Nothing can get through it. Well, there's 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 beings that travel through wormholes back out to wherever they're from all the time. Ah, uh, no, you have to get permission from the spirit beings to travel. They are they do allow travel, but you have to get permission to travel from them. But they're not giving permission for ships to come in here and take delivery of us as slaves. Well, who? Okay, and uh, who are the spirit beings? Oh wow, I only know of the. Uh, Blue avians, the small spear energy ones, and the um, triangle, golden triangular head ones. I don't know of the other two. Okay. Are they like a, a peacekeeping force that's trying to protect us? Yeah, they're trying to. Well, this planet is, this is not the first batch, by the way. This uh -huh. planet is a slave planet. It's a planet for growing slaves. Wow. We're just the latest batch. And then we all get taken away, and then they start again. And uh, and they, the spear beings, you know, yeah, they're like the the, the marshal, you know, the sheriff. Say, okay, stop doing uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. Don't do that anymore. When was ah. the last time we were harvested? I don't know Any those. Idea? I don't know those details. Flood or? I don't know those okay, details. You just know we're the first batch. Okay, we don't know everything, but that's okay. All I all I know we're is that. There. That we that that the uh, the first humans the, that went down in the inner earth, I believe, were 17 million years ago. So I mean, I don't know how many batches, but it's more than one, and we're the latest. And they want to keep doing that, and we want that we want that cycle to stop, and we can stop that cycle because the spirit beings put that barrier up around our solar system. We're able to do that. The problem is. Is we have, meaning the secret space program, the United States military. The, I'm sorry, it's not just the United States military. The inter 
planetary corporate conglomerate consists of all the major corporations in the United States. That's who rules. Okay, well, they have a billion plus people out there and hundreds of bases out there. And the, and, and these people who, uh, uh, we made agreements with, the United States made agreements with for high, uh, advanced technology to say, hey, we're going to collect there or we're going to, you're, you're going to deliver those seven billion people up or we're going to take your one billion people off of your, uh, bases. One way or another, we're going to get payment. Mm-hmm. So, so it's not so simple. Not so simple. Bases. What bases? We have what hundreds bases? of bases throughout the galaxy. Again? We have hundreds of bases. So they're going to thousands so of bases throughout them, the galaxy. So they can uh, well, get them I, from I other bases. Have, it, it's like, they I don't own us. How, no. Eisenhower didn't own us. He can't sell us. This is bullshit. No. I don't accept it. <laughs> I, I won't put that for sale. Fuck that. Oh, no, you don't use either. that word, honey. <laughs> so, so when was this outer barrier put up? December 5th, 2014. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're protected to- from, for now, but we're not protected for good. Go ahead, Let's Joanne. See, I, oh, I feel, we'll, we'll, we'll probably just have to... We'll be back in five minutes. Oh, break time. Hold okay. that thought, Joanne. Remember where you're okay. at. We'll come back and talk okay. to you. Okay. Yep. Thanks. We'll be back in five minutes. In the case of purely internal affairs, be quiet. But by a two-thirds majority, in the case of more quiet, I order you to be quiet. Look, you stupid bastard, you've got no arms left. Yes, I have. Hey, look, it's just a flesh wound. I don't believe I've seen such a display of courage, skill, nerve, grace, and stupidity. I'll do you for that. Oh, what? Come here. What are you going to do, bleed on me? I'm invincible. You're a loony. The Black Knight always triumphs. Roundtable Live, Monday through Friday, 1 a.m. till 4 a.m. Eastern Time. Bring your mind, bring your ideas, bring your voice. King Arthur had nothing on us. Here at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. Enjoy your extra big-ass fries. You didn't give me no fries. I got an empty box. Would you like another extra big-ass fries? I said I didn't get any. Thank you. Your account has been charged. Your balance is zero. Please what? come back when you can afford oh, to make no, a purchase. No. I'm sorry you're having trouble. Come on. Trouble. I'm sorry you're starving. Thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio. Here at Revolution Radio, we believe in freedom of ideas, freedom of speech, but above all, we believe in freedom of existence through self-reliance. This station is 100% listener-supported, and as a fundraising promotion, I have a kick-ass free gift for a $100 donation. 35,000 seeds. 25 years in the freezer. Long-term storable, 54 different varieties. So, if the prices go crazy, the shit hits the fan, or if you just want to save tons of money every year by creating your own food, like I do, grab our seed pack special. Just look for the banner on the homepage at freedomslips.com. Don't be a statistic. Don't be part of the problem. 
Be part of the solution. We need to ask humans to start taking care of ourselves and not depending on the mega courts to provide unhealthy, nasty food. Included in this package is also a DVD with 900 survival and off-grid living documents on the offline home canning how to do everything website all on the DVD. So when you're growing all that food, you know how to can it, store it, preserve it, etc. with all these documents. So thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. I hope that you will pick up this package and start learning to be free. Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps and freedom is one seed that needs to be planted. What we do in life that goes in eternity. for tuning in to Revolution Radio. Here at Revolution Radio, we are listener sponsored and commercial free, but there still are bills to pay. In order to raise some needed funds to cover the cost, our station is offering a silver special. In the continental United States for a $60 donation, or in Alaska, Hawaii, or Canada for a $70 donation, we will send you an uncirculated 2018 one ounce pure silver eagle. The $70 donation, uh, the extra 10 is to cover shipping, by the way, outside of the continental United States. When making the donation, you must put Silver Eagle promo in the notes on the donation. And thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio at revolution.radio and freedomslips.com. Without you, there is no less. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. It happens more often than we can imagine. In my case, I was sitting at home, and out of nowhere, I just started feeling uncomfortable. Then it got worse, and I started perspiring. I tried to ignore it, but I waited too long. The chest pain came as we were driving to the hospital emergency. I felt my life clock begin to tick. I barely survived. There was lots of damage done to my heart. What do I do now? I was lucky. I took a leap of faith and tried a seven-herb formula with hawthorn, garlic, cayenne, and more called Extendivite. Herbs have been used for thousands of years to keep us healthy. If you're not using Extendivite as a preventative supplement, maybe it's time to start. To order, call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Aloha and welcome back to the Sacred Matrix. And I'm your host, Jana Kara Lesson, with my co-host, Dr. Sasha Alex Lesson, and our producer, the world famous Thomas Becker. And our guests are Joanne Richard and Dan Cooper. And we are talking about the secret space program, the warrior training, the laws of the treasures that really got show. And we're going to focus a little bit more about the doom and gloom, and then we're going to go around to <laughs> solutions. What can we do about this? Dr. Sasha, Alex Lesson, are you there? Are you back? Yes, I am. What, I want you to know that the human race, the, uh, uh, humans have been conditioned to be slaves. We are created uh, by the Anunnaki who uh, put some of our genes together oh. with Homo erectus or ancestors genes to make us slaves and then the uh, Sumerian uh, Anunnaki started raiding the African uh, 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 compounds and as soon as humans broke free and started re-civilizing themselves after the flood they started doing slave raids against each other and we have been slave driven and had an ideology of slavery and you stop being a slave the minute you realize that you're free 
then you can't be killed. Then it's like Sorry. Tito Louverture. Who, uh, what, huh? Anyway, you're not I a slave once you say you're a slave. Finish your thought. But I forgot to do the commercial, honey, about the fundraising. Uh, okay, sorry. Okay, I gotta rewind. Okay, um, we're, you know, we need your funds. We definitely need some funds here. Please go over to the donation button on Revolution Dot Radio. Radio, we are listener supported, and we need need your donations. And a mad painter, where are we in our fundraising for this month? How far? What, what uh, more? What? Yeah, what do we need? We have fourteen fifteen, and we need eleven thirty five still. And Thursday or Friday night, we got hacked, and it took our cloud server out. So we've got an additional four hundred dollars this month. We're going to have to come up with. Oh dear. We had ransomware oh, get into our cloud. Wow. Straight from Israel. Ransomware. By the way. Oh my God. I oh. thought the cloud was safe. Oh. Okay. <laughs> So much for the cloud. Okay, so I'm sorry I interrupted you, sweetheart. Finish your statement, and and then we'll go on back to the conversation. Joanne, we left with Joanne. Were you done with what you were saying? I'm sorry, I was so rude. I interrupted you, but I of course, up. dear, that's your wife's privilege, and you exercised it well. <laughs> okay, so Joanne, we we uh, the commercial break. Oh, somebody mute. The commercial break interrupted you mid sentence. So back to you. What were you saying? Okay. Well, I, I now that I'm I'm hearing Dan talk. Okay, so it's like because I wasn't putting it together. So this is the sphere beings that Corey Good talks about. So the sphere being alliance because that's what his group is called. This is this is what you're talking about. With this yes. Barrier and all that. Yes. Okay. I, I was informed in '81 that they were coming. In '89, uh-huh. they started bringing spears into our area, and the and the United States military asked the inner earth beings, "Do you know who these who these people are?" And they said, "Well, yeah, we do. Um, they had an outer barrier around our solar system for 500 million years or something. I forgot what it was, but they had told them if, if they're back, they're going to put up that they're going to put up that barrier again." So uh-huh. they, so the United States military and the United States Secret Space Space Program and all the interplanetary corporate conglomerate and everybody that knew, everybody had any power at all, in the United States, or uh, knew that it was going to happen. They just didn't know when. Uh-huh. They were told. Interesting. So that that's definitely something I I so want to can... talk about with Mark because I've never ahead, heard about the ahead. outer barrier thingy. So um, that's interesting to hear about. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, so Stephen Greer you know? says uh, uh, Greer says that uh, part of that uh, the trip that they had scheduled before that happened was the false alien invasion, which would allow a dictatorship, and all. It, you know, he he's still talking about that, and he's CIA. Uh huh. Well, my my one of my points too is that. I know there's still wormhole travel and technology. I mean, I know there's wormhole travel still going on, so that didn't stop in 2014. But um, I certainly, I, I don't know much about what Corey talks about, you know. But um, I'm not disagreeing. I just don't know enough about it to argue about it. So, <laughs> so I need to, I need to ask and and look into that. Yeah, the thing is, is that, um, you know, many people say, I'm, well, I'm just following Corey. You know, I'm just taking Corey's dialogue. Um, I had actually uh, had communications with uh, both defense secretaries, email communications. They wiped that, of course. But I had email communications with uh, both defense secretaries of the Obama administration, uh-huh. Obama and and Michelle, uh, sending them emails telling them about the outer barriers coming. Uh-huh. Way before Corey started talking about it. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not arguing with you at all. This is all new to me, so. That's okay. That's all right. The point is that that the the aliens, there is no alien invasion coming because that was just going to be a hoax for them to come down and um, say, well, do you want to go with these other aliens? Uh, because, you know, uh, you know, they'll take you to their planets and because these these bad aliens are going to take over this planet, you got to go with them and play. It's a really bad place to stay anyway because of global warming and it was just part of that whole scam to get you all to voluntarily leave and become slaves. Hmm. But, it, but, it got, but it got nixed when the spear being put the outer barrier around. It's done. Can't 
Can't come and, they can't come and collect anymore. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, you, you know, in a way, know, it's just uh, like what H.G. Wells said about... Wait, my turn. <laughs> Wait, my, my turn. My turn. So, Dan, how do you know... And I forgot what I was going to say. How do you know... Um, okay, you had your own sources, so independent of Corey Good, and, and I'm not... Qu- I don't know what's going on with Corey Good stuff, so I haven't really followed it, but... Um, anyway, so you have your own independent source... And I had another question part of this, so, uh, uh, but I can't remember what it was. So, anyway, <laughs> how do you know this is? Um, oh, I don't remember. I'm sorry. I totally lost my train of thought. Somebody else. Somebody else talk. Sasha, did you have something to say? Sasha, uh, uh, I can't remember. Uh, it. I'm sorry. I've lost my uh, mind. Okay. <laughs> oh no! Wait, 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 you know, one of the things that. It, uh, I, I guess I asked both of you. There's, there's all this thing about they've uh, cleansed part of the uh, great uh, cavern system at uh, near uh, America's entrance to Antarctica, and uh, there's, there's supposed, uh, supposedly gigantic ruins there that they've said, but there's parts that aren't closed. On the other hand, I've been getting information from my sources about a whole set of civilizations uh, under the. Uh, uh, under Antarctica and uh, uh-huh. a federation, a German federation, uh, whose kids go to all our universities and uh, are part of the of, of the uh, Fourth Reich that's running the planet now. Hmm. Well, the, the Nazis don't run the planet. They're a very small faction of the secret space program, ICC. They're, they're, they don't rule. They're a very small faction. They still are there, but they're a very small faction. They do have Antarctica. That was given to them in the treaty. Uh, right. Antarctica was a, well, you know, I can't, I don't know. I mean, because there's so many different histories. Remember, they've done this whole slave thing, take the crop away, slave thing, take the crop away. I don't know how many mm-hmm. times. But the NSA mm-hmm. officers who told me about Antarctica told me that it, uh, that it was a major uh, alien, civil, there were major alien civilizations there when there was no ice and that they want it mm-hmm. returned. They want, they want all that ice melted oh. off so that they, so that they can return and, 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 and because they really like Antarctica and they want it back um, when we're all removed. Well, you know, right now, uh, the, the, uh, there is a great sliding of uh, Thwaite and several, several other gigantic glaciers, the size of, uh, yeah. of, of Maryland. That are slipping down uh, toward the toward the sea, and they'll make a big plunk and lots of waves. And behind that, there's the ice sheet itself, and it's, it looks like that you're talking about global warming being a, a planned event. It certainly is consistent with uncovering the ice from Antarctica. Right. Hmm. Yeah, and you know the only thing I know about Antarctica, uh, and I agree with you that the Nazis are there. Um, they have obviously a base there and I know there's a huge portal there um, I know I don't know exactly what's going on there now but I know that they're still there that much I do know and Mark I know that Mark really won't talk about the Antarctic although I'm sure he knows exactly what's going on there but he won't he's very tight-lipped about it but I know in the past that he's been there and his dad's you know they've had to do or his, like his dad like, like I mentioned before his dad was there in a combat situation but um, and and the the Nazi, you know, they had a whole a whole civilization going on down there. It was it was amazing because he described it in one of his reports about you know what the like the city kind of was like and the and uh, the portal area and the breeding program they had there so that you could have all blonde haired blue eyed babies you know growing up and um, very fascinating. I do know and I need to kind of resurrected i have a report because his his dad was part of admiral Byrd's operation high jump in the 40s and mark did a report on that and i need to go back and dig it out and read more of it it's one of the ones i did not read thoroughly and i've never given a talk about it but um because i know it, it there is a section there on you know clearly about the the nazis there and and then there's another section about like ufo activity and stuff like that so I should probably go back and read it because I know it's a hot topic these days. 
I, I think I do yeah, remember uh, uh, reading that. And what, what he said is that first, the, the Brits had found the main hole that the submarines that were coming from uh, Argentina and the south of Africa, uh, where right. they were going in and out, and they tried to raid themselves, raid it themselves, and they were wiped out. And when Bird came, uh, the the the, the uh, the tender for the air, airplanes was sunk. I think it was called the Pine Island. There was a whole uh-huh. bunch of planes shot right out of the air. Uh, I mean, like 42 Marines got killed. And uh, a bird was was sent back. He, he made speeches. We should nuke the, the damn place. And the uh, Joint Chiefs oh, wow. shut him up. And after a while, uh, uh, his, his sponsor, uh, 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 they pushed his uh, sponsor out of the window. Uh, everyone that was going to blab about this stuff that's 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 the story that uh, John Lace and others tell anyway uh-huh yeah clearly clearly there's been a lot of interesting uh, history going on there that most of us don't know about so I I should look more carefully at that report <laughs> just so I'm more up to speed on it but I know somebody I was yeah. talking to the other day brought up an interesting point um, about when the Nazis Suppose well, not supposedly went there, but like when they went there, um, like I don't know if it was had anything to do with paperclip at the time, but like in the 30s or whatever, was the, or no, 40s, it would have been the 40s, sorry. Um, but when they were going there, and it's like he was questioning because they would have gone there. He was like saying May, June, whatever. So like our summer, but then it would be winter there. So he was, you know, wondering how they could have, you know, got. To any base that would be there because of the thick ice, you know, thick ice that oh, would be there. Warm. It would have been winter. It's warm underneath. There's volcanic activity. It's warm underneath. It's warm underneath these great big caverns okay. in uh, in Tierra del Fuego too, for that matter. Right. It's hot down there, yeah, and there's yeah. an inner sun, is you, what they say. How do you get under the ice to get to where the base would be? There, there's a, there's a, that was the cave entrance that was the, uh, oh, okay. uh, there was a three pronged attack in the uh, Battle of the Wedel Sea. And what I meant when I said that the Nazis took over, I mean that they came and they were integrated into American society after they were right, debriefed right. and now they had the military right. industrial complex of the United States. Yeah, yeah. The whole paperclip thing. Okay. Uh, Sasha, all what your, do you think account, about that, all your accounts are very accurate. Very, very accurate. You do great research, and they're all correct accounts. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> you can thank my husband for that. So I don't what do that else research. does Mark want us to know? What's Joanne, that's why I said I'm extremely honored to have you with us. <laughs> You're very kind. Um, he didn't. He didn't have any so what specific else Mark message. Want us to know? I don't know if you're choking, but when you're done choking, what what does I'm, Mark want us to know? He's stuck there. You're his liaison. You're telling the world things he wants us to know. Yeah, you know. Well, we we've been dealing with. You know, we've been. We're dealing really with honoring. Oh, thank you. Um, I I was I I think I. He hasn't said anything, but, you know, we're all kind of looking at what's happening or what might happen with Iran, because I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, but I, I did say, you know, is it – because everybody wants us to think that it's all about the nuclear stuff. And, and again, just like uh, Syria and stuff, that may be part of it. But and, and this is not him giving me any big story. I'm just – reading his body language i think there's more going on there like there has been for a long time but i think there's more going on in iran than um, obviously we're going to get from washington or the media um just like you know i i do a talk on the middle east and you know it's, it's one that people like a lot and you know there's there's numerous <clears throat> dimensional gates in in all those mountains over there and there's a very particular strong stable one in iran so you know groups always want to jockey for power and control over these various uh powerful dimensional portals so i i can't swear that that's what's going on but i know there's more to the story than um than meets the eye as usual so if, if nothing else I have learned to look beyond the public story in all these years I've been working with Mark. <laughs> so, 
Right. So that's interesting. So, yeah. Dan, do you have any questions for Joanne, especially that she could take back to Mark? No. Do a follow-up show. I, no, I, I didn't really. I didn't really think of uh, questions for Mark. I, I, you should have asked me before. <laughs> oh, uh, Joanne, you well, know it's with the story. Every, I, Joanne, please tell everybody the story of how Mark was uh, uh, and uh, the president uh, Carter went beyond uh, the military and struck for freedom and freed the hostages and, uh, and uh, oh. Dulce. This is one of the most amazing stories, and this is why I think Mark should be uh, yeah. not should be. A, uh, 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 get out of, not only get out of jail, but have this story yeah. known to everybody. And, and you know, this, and, and there's many people out there who don't like him as far as, you know, the New World Order type people and people he pissed off. But um, I think the Dulce mission that he was part of, that's clearly one, you know, like the, the rich elite New World Order people who don't want disclosure. Um, they're, they're, we're very upset that that rescue mission took place. But, okay, um, they had been, uh, our, our secret space fleet, well, they didn't call it that back then. They called it the, um, oh, I've lost my train of thought, um, the deep space fleet. So, and so our deep space fleet had been on a mission. This is, they went on a mission in August of 1979, um, and they dealt with their mission. They had a space battle. They were victorious. They came back feeling very cocky. They had known for years, and they were following what had been going on at the Dulce base that got built in New Mexico in, in the 40s. And it had become a place of horrific, you know, thousands and thousands of human victims and horrible experiments being done on them for genetic experiments and mind control and breeding and, and all kinds of, and just nasty, like, sex orgies with aliens and our Congress people, certain ones, I don't know who, um, just a lot of nasty stuff going on there. And a small faction of the military decided that enough was enough. And, you know, my father-in-law was part of that. And, and through partly through remote viewing, they had discovered how bad it had gotten and how out of control. So they got permission by President Carter to do a rescue operation, and then he basically had to turn his turn the other cheek. He couldn't. I don't think he could. He couldn't sign anything official saying "go do this," but um, he gave his nod and then turned the other way. and And it was funded by like Ross Perot and a few others. But anyway, it was a well organized military operation, and you had groups from the NSA, one of their you know secret top secret fast response teams and you had Delta Force and you know a couple of the Green Berets or whatever so you had several military groups go in you had different squads going in from different entrances Mark's dad was um, there was like some some general that was like top top person and then um, Mark's dad was commander in chief of that particular mission and Mark was I know people on the internet get this wrong all the time. Oh, Mark was in charge of the whole thing. Well, he was not in charge, but he was in charge of one small squad of like I don't know how many people. But he got the the fun <laughs> the fun adventure of they've been tracking a UFO because you know most of the the entrances are hidden or covered by holographics. There's one big entrance like where their spacecraft would come in, and it was hidden by holographics so that you think you're just looking at the side of the mountain and I've been to Dulce twice now and I can see how it's very possible and again some of the you know one of the Apache elders showed me he goes well this is where we think you know the aircraft the spacecraft would fly in and it looks exact you know very possible um, that he you know saw the that particular spot that it was very logical to be anyway they tracked a UFO in Mark trained for like 12 hours on it was called the x-22 at the time it was an experimental craft it is the precursor to the marines osprey that they use now vertical takeoff um i i'm not the technical air aircraft person so you know mark got to fly that in his crew went in like that entrance um they blew up some stuff you know again i'd have to 
be quoting from the report, but they blew up some stuff. They entered into hand-to-hand combat. They, you know, went down several levels. They were in and out in an hour. They rescued 3,500 victims. They had to leave a lot of victims there who didn't make it. Um, They blew up a major portion of the base. They captured two or three alien craft. Our friends, the raptors, came in at the the end of the mission to help them and like mark said it you know we were in and out in less you know an hour or just slightly over an hour and i've got some great quotes by some of the the generals and the other commanders who were involved and you know it's like it's just amazing what you know the boots on the ground men had to deal with and the horrific stuff that they hadn't realized how horrible that place was and 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 the thought that they had to choose to leave some of the victims behind because they couldn't take everybody, and because um, some people were just so far gone or had been so tortured that you know they couldn't take everybody because there was more, way more than 3,500 people there. And but they they got as many of them as they could out to safety. They debriefed a lot of them. They would have to mind wash them. And you know I don't know where any of those people are. You know he's not going to well, talk about it. Right. So. You know, one we know is is Onizuka, who's a hero from uh, Hawaii, who uh, uh, Mark said was in on the rescue with him. Yes, he was. Uh, he was in that space mission right before the Dulce thing, and then he was in the Dulce thing, and as well as two other, you know, newish astronauts. And then he died in one of the shuttle explosions or whatever. So that was very sad. But yes, he was. He was part of that mission, um, and I. I'd have to look at the report to know exactly what his his job was, like which squad he was working with. But, um, you know, he might have been one of the ones that, like, helped take one of the, the captured craft out, you know, to get it out of there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, mm-hmm. you know, again, it's it was – they were in and out in an hour. He didn't he didn't care. He didn't look at what the floors or the walls looked like. And, you know, he their, their job was to rescue the victims. You rescue the women and the children – and, you know, take out as much of the base as you can and try and stop their operation. And, you know, they stopped it. It closed down for several years, and then it reopened. A lot of it went other places. But, you know, again, and, and the report that I sell through my nonprofit is is something he helped edit that went to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. So, you know, even the Joint Chiefs of Staff didn't get to see everything. But, um so I don't, I don't, and I don't have a full version of it. I just happened to have a copy of what got edited and sent to them. But uh, it was, you know, he said it was a horrible experience, and it's one he hates to talk about. So we don't talk about it much. But you know, I was, I was glad when I finally got asked to go speak there, and he, you know, said, "Sure, go." It's like, okay, cool, finally. Um, but the the people there, the Apache tribe that lives there in that town. They are so loving and wonderful, and they're talking about their, they're now talking about like their UFO sightings, which they have regularly, and and their Bigfoot sightings and their Bigfoot evidence, and they're just wonderful people. It's it's amazing, and the town is just a, a sleepy little Apache town, which is just, and there's not much there, but, you know, you drive there from Albuquerque, and it's beautiful countryside, but anyway, I loved going there, and I was just honored to be able to speak there a couple times. So, yeah. So I, I would like to, to say that uh, uh, Mark and his uh, also related that when he was at that meeting uh, uh, in England, that yeah. uh, the the guards were were Bigfoot. And uh, uh, remember uh-huh. that the reason that we are part, all of us are partly uh, Homo erectus, uh, and that yeah. that's the part that's intuitive. And that's the part that's compassionate. And we owe yeah. that a lot to our relationship to uh, Bigfoot. Yeah, they're, they're pretty wonderful, apparently. And they will hire themselves out as bodyguards, you know, to whoever. So at the time Mark saw them in England, they were bodyguards to a species he was not, you know, that we were not happy with. But, um, but again, they, they do hire themselves out. But they are, you know, they, I, I would love to meet one. They're fascinating. And they, they are from space, but they're, inter, you know, they can travel interdimensionally and, you know, they, they're very intelligent. And he's, he's written, he's, he's had encounters with them a few times. And so he's included that in whatever report that that happens at. But it's like, they're amazing creatures. And, 
again, and they are, there's, I don't know how many of them are, but, you know, they are there near the Dulce base to watch over it and protect it and stuff like that. So um, there's quite a lot of them there, so it's no no wonder that the, the natives see evidence of them all the time. Can I interject? Pardon me? May I, may I say something? Of course. Uh, the NSA told me sure. that Mark... <laughs> may I? Can I talk? Okay, yes, the it, NSA told me that wait, Mark you, the Count... You're breaking up Treadig. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? It's, it's at your end. I can hear you. Go ahead. Everybody Did else is again? fine. My, my end? Okay. Everything okay. was fine. No, so okay, it's Janet's end. No, it's my end. It's, uh, okay, can you hear me? It's my end. I'll yes. come back. But go ahead. Say what you're going to say. Go ahead. The yeah. NSA told me that Mark's account is extreme. The Dulce incident, the, uh, the Dulce battle... Uh, is that 79, the Dolce Battle of 79? Yep, yep, fall of yeah. 79. Not, not the Dolce Battle of 52, but the Dolce Battle of 79. Right. They told me about both. Mark's account is extremely accurate. He did not elaborate. He did not fabricate, and he did not embellish. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate cool. that. What about the guy in 52 who got injured in the, in the fight? Correct. What did you, you hear about that? Same thing. Also accurate. There are very accurate accounts. I, I, I don't. I didn't memorize which ones he, he said were the more accurate, uh, uh, but I do remember Mark's account of the '79 incident and it is highly valued in the NSA. Oh, thank cool. you. The people who are opposing um, what. What's going on? That not everybody agrees. Even though there's, yeah. they're all involved. There's a lot of them. They're like. There are different factions uh, in the secret space program, and, and especially now at the outer barriers up, there are a lot of factions like, well, wait a second, maybe we should change. And like you said, the new world order, they don't want to change. Right. Go oh, ahead. Gosh, no. <laughs> and, and, and the new world order people are the first ones who are going to sell out their grandchildren to be slaves. So, you know, they're in it for themselves. That's because they each one of them own pristine planets out there, and they don't want to lose that because that was part of the deal. Wow! So they have they have personal interests, and we're not talking about a few. We're not talking about millions of dollars. We're talking about entire planets. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. Well, no wonder. Yeah, so I've heard tell some us more about that. Yeah, tell us more about that. E- each so these- each person. Each person, you want me to tell you or what? Each yes, person, go ahead. each person in the committee of two hundred, and I believe it's the council of seven or the council of twelve, the over oversight council. They they have uh, veto rights anyway. It's a committee two hundred. Everybody on that committee has been bought off to go along. They got they got tech, personal technology. They get they get med pod. They get they get extended lives. You know. Uh, Medical treatment. They have planets that were given to them. I mean, it's not money. What they were bribed with is way. I mean, they they have thousands of people uh, from these different uh, uh, that serve them, hand and foot. No, no, no. You don't. You have no idea the extent of the briberies. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's uh, as. Above, so below. It sounds like a picture of the Earth, and it sounds like a picture of outer space, and it sounds like the way our uh, dominant subpersonalities treat some of our repressed personalities. It's within too. Yeah, they're, that that they're just like that here. Same people, same attitude. Uh huh. Huh. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm back. Uh, Go ahead, Joanne. I wasn't saying anything. I was listening. Questions, feedback, comments. We're losing Janet. Janet, you're breaking up. Well, anyway, the solution that I see for Mark, uh, as well as for the criminals that are are running things, is is some kind of uh, uh, confess, and we won't won't punish you any further. Uh, Truth and reconciliation, and let everybody out of jail, and don't punish anybody. Just stop the criminal behavior. Uh huh. It, it's nice. more. 
look up withdraw from the conspiracy. It's it's a it's a legal yeah. term. Withdraw from the conspiracy. There's going to be a window. We're going to be putting them all on trial in a few years. Um, I don't know exactly when, but we're going to be putting them all on trial, and they're be giving all of them will be given everybody in the secret space program and everybody in the ICC and everybody uh, that collaborates with them. They will all be given a window of opportunity to withdraw from the conspiracy. Look up the legal term. Uh huh. Go ahead. Okay, so they're going to uh-huh. withdraw from the conspiracy, and some will choose if, if they did. What will happen to them if they don't voluntarily withdraw from the conspiracy? What will happen to them? The only sanction that will be issued is um, hard labor for all eternity. (laughs) 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 And and, and it's like live TV. It's like live TV. We get to watch them all do it. Well, who, it's, it's, who is in charge of offering that or managing that withdrawal from conspiracy? Well, it's the it's the BRICS, the the Earth Alliance. Okay, okay. Well, I actually I haven't convinced I haven't convinced the Earth Alliance, but they'll I, I'm pretty sure I will be able to if they let, if I get over there. But I am trying to convince them now. Uh, they, they they just want to execute. Uh, Everybody and I said, don't do that because then their souls go back to their planets and then they get reborn and then they're gonna come at us again. So you can't uh, let them go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Well, my my only um, because to me and and again, Mark was, you know, they never called it the secret space program when he was in it. You know, it was it was just wasn't called that. But um, you know, and to me, what I've not grown up, what I've listened to and, and read and researched of his stuff and the material he presents um, is what he was part of and his dad was to save the planet or and, and from all threats. So to me, that's very honorable and, and whatever. The What you're talking, and I'm not arguing with you, I'm just saying what I'm hearing you say is like, it sounds like the secret space program, as you know it, or as you see it now, um, is like this horrible thing. Is it not still trying to protect the planet, or is that the other guys? No, they're not trying to protect the planet. They want to distress the planet to the point where everybody on the surface voluntarily leaves to yeah, be uh, collected up by the aliens, and then twenty-five, and then it only takes us 20, 20 to twenty-five years to put it right back into its pristine condition. Industrial reclamators. We have all the technology they have. The secret space program, uh-huh. uh, the deep space program, whatever you want to call it. Uh, right. They have all the technology to put this planet back in its pristine condition within 25 years, and that's what they're going to do. Huh. And that's the idea of saving the planet. It's a okay, bad. And, and I've, I've, I've heard of it from that point because I've only heard about it like from okay, we've had. And, and, you know, he's not telling me, like, what's going on at this moment. Um, but, like, wh- when he was involved, for example, it was like you've got an invading fleet of bad aliens who want to take over the planet. And it was, you know, just like going to war with somebody here on the Earth. It was that kind of saving the planet type of thing. Um, so that's, right. that's the context. The, but but they from. gave up. They They sold us all into slavery for the technology to be able to battle those aliens, so in their minds, they're saving the planet. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Okay, I get you. But they sold us into slavery to do it. Huh. Uh, you, you know, it's like uh, you, you can't uh, uh, commit a criminal acts to stop criminality. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's bizarre, and yeah. uh, we don't have to agree to uh, to anything like that. We don't right. agree to right. that. We have immortal souls, and we can stand up and die when we need to, but we don't have to be slaves. I, I you know, I agree, Sasha, but but basically, we have a saying in the United States: uh, "Don't go to a gunfight with a knife." Janaki Pandit used to say, "Don't go to war without an army." That's why I work with the Earth Alliance. They're an army. Yeah. It's a military group. Still or is? No, I I had convinced Xi Jinping in '85 to uh, 
to to engage in business, and in that way he would be able to defeat the uh, the United States uh-huh. with business. Uh-huh. And I was correct; they did. So is that he right even asked now? me. He even asked me how many years is it going to take. I said thirty. Wow. Go so ahead. is that why they have the new uh, tariffs? Twenty five percent. That was in. What are you talking about? The, 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 oh, the, the tariffs and stuff. Didn't they raise the tariffs from from fifteen or ten percent to twenty five percent? Trump raised the tariffs on the other day. Look it up. Good, good. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I um, well, yeah, the United States is losing the the uh, they're losing in business to China. That's my strategic business plan that defeated the United States in business. So, what's the outcome if the United States is defeated in business? What's the positive? What are we gaining from that? We as citizens of the United States? Uh, what do you mean we? If if the United States gets defeated, what is your logic? If the United States could defeat it in business, what is the benefit of that happening for humanity? The BRICS will free all the surface uh, from uh, the, those agreements for slavery. They will free us all from having to commit to the, uh, slavery, and they will return this planet to its pristine condition in 25 years. Or they give us the clean, green energy systems. Oh, yeah, everything. That you're oh, working yeah. on developing. No, and no, how do you I that? invented that stuff. They want me to come and bring it to them. Right, okay. okay. So that's your that's your card that you're well, playing. Well, no. <laughs> no. My card in China started in 85 when I convinced them to do business and gave them the strategic business plan to defeat the United States in business. That's my card. So why, why, okay, would so- you, why would you... Um, what that? It, it sounds like it sounds like you're. Why would you want to help them defeat us in business? Uh, because that was the uh, approach uh, in order to free us from the slave commitment and to okay. return this planet to its pristine condition. That was okay. my strategy. That, that, that was yeah. that was the only way to get the free energy systems. The other way they keep us on fossil fuels forever. So we we couldn't do it by that, us. Is that what I'm getting? Being more powerful in business than somebody else. Our because it's the, that, who's huh? keeping us in fossil fuels? Who's keeping us locked in fossil fuels? The Americans? Is that Probably. what you're saying? Yeah, the United States uh, wants you to continue using fossil fuels in order to bring the plant to extinction so that you all want to leave. Okay, so that's the United States. Now, who's be, who's controlling the United States? That they have the, that, um, the ICC controls the United States. Okay, and the ICC, are they human? The Interplanetary Corporate, corporate are, they, are they human or are they... No, are they're they all human. Or are they no, they're all humans. They're all humans. Are they Are they the royals? No, they, no, they're not royals. They're regular folks. They're not nearly as smart as you, Janet and Joanne. You guys are a lot smarter than most of the people that are ruling us. They're regular they're folks, Tom, really, they're truly. Good. They're just regular folks. Huh. Well, are why are they so mean? Regular folks. Yeah. Why are they so mean? Why are they so greedy? What makes them so mean and greedy? Because they, they took the vibes. They they took the technology and and traded us for that technology. Yeah. All right. So that had to be political leaders. I mean, who who traded us in the first place? Political player? leaders? No, those are lackeys. Those? No, no, no. Political leaders take instructions from the ICC. They don't make okay. decisions. Well, see, that's what I. Is it is it Zuckerberg? Is it Gates? I mean, is it no, the, no? It's the board it, uh, of it's the it's the boards of directors of all of the aerospace companies. Oh, okay. really? And so, okay. name some names. Like who who's who? Are the oh, you know, a Lockheed Martin, Lockheed Martin, Je- uh, mm-hmm. Marilyn Houston, Chairman, President. And, well, why uh, is she so mean? Why is she want to No, she's that? not so mean. She's committed <laughs> because she had she, she inherited that agreement. Money she, her, she herself didn't make those agreements. Yeah. She just probably said, "Okay, here's here's what you get." It's kind of like it's kind of like when a new president takes over, they take him aside and say, "Okay, here's what's really going on." So, you know, get on board. Type of stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, you have to you have to carry out the uh, the agreement. You got to follow through on the treaty. Well, I didn't okay. make it. Yeah, but you can't change it. 
think we need a new <laughs> Well, you know, look, look, let me tell you. You know, wait, you get, you are morally responsible. Jan, one of Janet's, uh, people that she was interviewing was an assassin when the president of the United States let it be known that somebody was to be off this guy and he was bragging about killing, uh, some 140, uh, uh, confirmed kills. Like he was proud of it and he was serving his country. From my perspective, that is, uh, that's murdering uh, people with and and using someone else's judgment about who should be killed this is you everybody's responsible for their own acts that's what we I'm responsible for my own acts that's what I think right. correct the Nuremberg the Nuremberg defense will do them no good at the trials huh so well, it's a trial it's, 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 yeah is it tr- <laughs> Is the trial related to rumors of indictments and stuff that we keep hearing about? No, no, no. That's all bullshit. That's all. That's all secret space program propaganda. <laughs> I'm not saying I. I'm not disagreeing with you. My husband basically called it that as well today. <laughs> oh, cool. See, so who do we? Who do we? It's like who's who's going to decide who gets put on trial? Yeah, who's going to do the arresting and and uh, trying these people? Everybody in the secret space program, everybody that collaborated with them, everybody that served them, everybody, everybody there, everybody, they all get put on trial. Every one of them. So does that have so, any impact uh, on my husband's future? <laughs> <laughs> no. How far down? No, Mark. No, no, no. Mark, Mark, Mark gets his opportunity to withdraw from the conspiracy. He already did a lot that withdrew. He already started. He was the first one who withdrew from the conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of his own man. That's why they framed him. <laughs> he's already yeah, been given. He's already, he's already been given a reprieval. I mean, because he did, and he's doing more. I mean, continuing to withdraw from the conspiracy by exposing what's what they what these bad people and their bad decisions. Well, somebody needs to tell Trump that my husband's been reprieved. <laughs> I have no power with Trump, and he has no real power. I, I know, and, and he has no power to really, uh, you know, the nope. state has to let Mark out, so. And they're not going to. Nope. <laughs> yeah, but what, what's happened is they, Trump. they created yeah. a situation. Yeah. Uh, no, Trump's created, not going to pardon him, so. Mark is uh, gets to oh, be, ha, have paid uh, meditation, and what's coming out of Mark isn't just his reports to Joanne, but it's this incredible fiction. You got to tune into Mark's fiction because he's telling you how to get out of this uh, and giving you a lot of insights in it. Listen, it's it, you know it's uh, uh, he's making lemonade out of out of the the, the lemon of being in jail, and it's, it's something good keeps coming out of Mark's pen. Yeah, you know, it's interesting cool. because um, we're, we're dealing with, uh, you know, a drama that was happening back at your conference. And um, so he's been putting forth an, an essay that I've been putting onto my blog site. And, and one of the most beautiful quotes that I just, you know, included there last night was um, about changing your perception about things. And you can either, you know do something dark about it or react strongly, or you can, you know, look for better possibilities or, you know, look for the good in something and take the high road basically and, and not react darkly about things. And, um, very, very intelligent. And it's like, Oh, well, okay. Cause it just didn't miss it. Cause I've been, you know, was feeling a little, um, down about the whole situation. It's like just reading that changed my perception and, you know, got me into a better mood and thinking, yeah, okay. I don't have to be in a bad mood about this. And, you know, so I read that. I got to see him. I'm talking with you guys tonight. You know, it's all good. Beautiful. Oh, good. Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> well, are yeah. you going to tell Mark Thank- about me? Of course. I've been taking notes through this whole thing. You're going to tell, know- tell Mark about me? You tell him that he's my hero. Oh, thank you. So where <laughs> are you allowed to say where you live? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Are you allowed to say where you live? Where do you live, like- Dan? I live in Yucca Valley, California. In where? Yucca Valley, California, Yucca. next to oh, Palm Yucca. Springs. Oh. oh, yes, I know. I'll be I'll be in that area next month. So, cool. 
Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, um, let me see now. Uh, Janet, you can give her my email address, yeah. and if you want to come meet me, then email me. Oh, all right. Thank you. All righty. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you'll get to meet him before I do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll make it happen. Yeah, yeah. I will um, – uh, you know, not on air here, but I will uh, yeah. exchange all the information and let you guys get to meet each other, and and then are, are I'll I'll you, be back. And hmm? no, are you, you're, are you guys coming back to the the mainland here? Not this uh, year. I've been yeah, suffering yeah. from uh, so an illness, but I I hope I I'm getting better. I'm slightly better. Good. I'm getting better, so I'm hoping by fall I can go back out and. Oh, and then, good. of course, in the winter, there's, there's not much going on in the winter in the uh, UFO conference field. So I'm right, hoping right. by 2020, which, okay, so 20, for, I keep getting that 2020 is going to be a really big year. Anybody have I any hope. insights on what's happening in 2020? Why do I keep feeling this? Is it just because I like 2020? <laughs> or is it <laughs> something really, you know, like the numbers? I, I don't know. I don't know, this, I don't know what it is. Proving- yeah, this year's proving to be challenging. So, um, I I hope next year will be bigger in a in a better way. So, well, let's keep positive thoughts about that. Are you speaking yeah, at any so conferences, Dan? Nobody has invited me to any conferences. Okay. Okay. Well, if you want to, well, we'll talk about that later. But you're yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. going to invent stuff, right, Dan? You're going to be. Yeah. In some, uh, I spend all my time uh, inventing, and it's really hard work. I bet. Right. So you're going to save the planet from this uh, fossil fuel stuff, this fossil fuel bullshit that we're dealing with for the last, you know, right, right. Years. Free, free you're going to help us gener- get off of that. Right. Free energy generators, Tell us motors, briefly and about engines that. don't use fuel. Free energy generators, motors, and engines, You well, I can use the higher forces, but... It looks like they're only going to allow the release of magnetic energy um, powered generators, motors, and engines, which don't require fuel and don't require uh, recharging. They never have to be recharged. They'll run for 30 years straight, um, nonstop. Nice. Okay. So they're going to be uh, they're going to be swapping out first what the planes, boats, trains, and then going into uh, engines for automotive. That's the so they want all the big stuff first. Uh, they also want desalination because they want to appease the OPEC countries. The OPEC countries came and asked us if we could. If they say, well, if you're going to stop oil, if you're going to stop using oil, what are we going to do? We're in the desert. Right. And so right. they said, well, we're not going to allow that because they are a major faction of the ICC. They said, we're not going to allow that unless you give us water and electricity, unlimited water and electricity, and all the minerals out of the water. So they want... And I, I, they, I was asked to invent it, and I did invent it. So I know exactly what's going on because huh. OPEC, you know, this is something we're do, we're doing right now. It's real. It's a real contract we're working on. So the OPEC countries they want between 200 million acre feet, and that's a lot of water. Uh, desal, they want they want us to take seawater and make it into fresh drinking water, and then they want all the minerals and precious metals out of the seawater. Uh, so that they can use for manufacturing facilities. So they want between 200 million acre feet. This is all eight OPEC countries. Uh, they want 200 million acre feet to 300 million acre feet of drinking water, fresh water, and they want uh, unlimited electricity um, and uh, all the minerals so they can do all the manufacturing. So they basically want – they don't want to be left in the lurch uh, when we stop using oil. Uh, I also – Will massive desalinization affect the uh, fish life? No. And that's and why they had saw- me design it, because uh, my background in engineering uh, is uh, I'm an, uh, an urban planner, and envi- I write environmental impact reports. And so I've already written that environmental impact report. That's one of the reasons they can besides the fact that I invented the system, they also wanted me to write the environmental impact report, and my environmental impact reports mean there will be no harm to the environment, none. Great, great. I also saw a um, TED Talk or something where uh, they're starting to replant the um, the deserts, and so they're doing a swatch from going, going from coast to coast across Africa, and it's uh, several miles wide, and um, that creates that re- replanting and uh, getting the grasses to grow again lowers the carbon um, input on the planet as well. So we start doing that desalinization uh, and reducing fossil fuels so we could 
how how rapidly could we take back our planet and make it pristine again? What do you think? Even, even with the lower level technology, meaning just the fifth force magnetic energy, um, 25 to 50 years, absolutely pristine planet. In 50 years, uh, pristine you say, again. 25 you say years, magnetic. absolutely pristine planet. What, when you say magnetic I'm energy. Sorry, I'm breaking up. Purely with magnetics. We, all, all the stuff I've invented and I'm patenting now. So, so what we had a guy that, that was living here that kept making these machines. So these magnets on a, on a, on a, a pivot wheel so that the positive side would hit the positive side of the other one and bounce them back and forth and back and forth eternally. Is, is that the kind of thing that, that, that your invention is? Mm-hmm. Well, that's a, that's a very lower level, uh, magnetic energy powered uh, generation system. Uh, the ones that I invent and the ones that will be used are they they're they're solid state nothing moves. Oh. Okay, we're going to be running out of time here. Uh, everybody, uh, Joanne, what's your website? How do people reach you? So it's Earth Defense Headquarters edhca dot org or edhq dot org, and so if they go to either website, my email is there, and then I have the blog site Dragon Hill News on WordPress, so you can find me. Well, thank you. We ran out of time. Thank you both. Aloha, much love and blessings. Thank you Aloha. very much. Thanks, Dan. And Aloha, thanks. And the man. Love you all. Love you all. Love you all. Bye. 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 attention. I've just been handed an urgent news story, and I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. On the go? Still want to listen? Don't have one of those fancy phones with too many buttons. Don't know what an app is? Or you don't even care? Well, we got you here at Revolution Radio. Now you can dial in 24-7 to listen to our shows. We have a number for Studio A and Studio B. And best of all, it's free. Don't forget, your carrier charges for your cell phone provider may apply, though. So check with your cell provider to make sure. So ready? Here you go. Get a pen. Here's the number. Studio A is 712-432-6958. And Studio B is 716-748-0112. Thank you very much for listening to Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, the number one listener-supported radio station in the world. Hey, everyone. It's Barbara Jean Lindsay, the Cosmic Oracle. If you have questions about your past lives or future plans, need answers from the cosmos about your love life or career, or just want to keep your finger on the pulse of the planet, check out my show, The Cosmic Oracle, here on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. Thanks for tuning in to Revolution Radio. Here at Revolution Radio, we are listener sponsored and commercial free, but there still are bills to pay. In order to raise some needed funds to cover the cost, our station is offering a silver special. In the continental United States for a $60 donation, or in Alaska, Hawaii, or Canada for a $70 donation, we will send you an uncirculated 2018 one ounce pure silver eagle. The $70 donation, uh, the extra 10 is to cover shipping, by the way, outside of the continental United States. When making the donation, you must put Silver Eagle promo in the notes on the donation. And thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio at revolution.radio and freedomslips.com. Without you, there is no less. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. Looking for a nightcap to fill your listening needs? 
Come join us on Spaced Out Radio with me, Dave Scott, right here on Revolution Radio. Monday through Friday for three hours a night, starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, we will take you down the supernatural path. From ET contact to the paranormal and all of the spiritual, cryptid, and conspiracy stories in between, you can find us right here on Revolution Radio at spacedoutradio.com.